So this video forms part of the carbonyl chemistry section of the second year organic chemistry module and it's going to discuss in very simple terms aldol reactions. So we've seen that carbonyl uh, compounds can behave as electrophiles and carbonyl functional groups themselves are typically electrophilic. So if we treated this carbonyl compound with a nucleophile, um, because of the polarization of the bond, the nucleophile would attack carbon and we kick the electrons up onto oxygen to form a tetrahedral intermediate like this. But we've also seen in the enols and enolates video that you can convert carbonyl compounds which have alpha protons into either their enolates or their enols. And these are nucleophilic, but they're nucleophilic at the alpha carbon, which is the one that's adjacent to where the carbonyl was originally. So if we take an electrophile and we expose our enolate or our enol to it, they will attack the electrophile and will end up functionalized at the alpha position. So this begs the question, can we take both of these reactivities and combine them together? We've got something derived from carbonyls which are nucleophilic, and we've got the carbonyl themselves, which is electrophilic. So can we combine this nucleophilic atom with this electrophilic atom over here? Well, the answer is yes. And if we treat um, an enolized carbonyl compound, so an enolate, with an unenolized carbonyl compound, we can get the combination of the two reactivities, where the nucleophilic alpha atom attacks the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, and we end up with aldol products. And this is the aldol reaction. So aldol reactions can be done under base uh, catalysis or acid catalysis via the enolates or the enols respectively. So let's start with the base catalyzed one, which is going to proceed via an enolate. So if we take a carbonyl compound and expose it to a base, um, I've just drawn a, an irreversible reaction arrow here, but depending on the base you're using and the nature of the substrate, it could be reversible. Uh, it's going to remove the alpha proton, as we've seen previously, to form the enolate. Uh, we're then going to expose our enolate to an unenolized carbonyl compound. Now that could be more of this compound over here, or it could be a completely different carbonyl compound. Um, but basically, the nucleophilic alpha atom in the enolate is going to attack the electrophilic carbon of the carbonyl compound, and we're going to form this sort of structure here, where we formed a bond between the alpha carbon of the uh, carbonyl compound that was enolized, and we have basically formed a tetrahedral intermediate out of the electrophilic carbonyl compound. Now, the base has removed the proton over here, so we can get that back and that will make the reaction catalytic. Alternatively, you might be doing this in a protic solvent, or you might get uh, an acidic quench. Uh, it depends on what protocol you're using. But basically, there's, there's going to be a source of protons in here somewhere, um, so you can stick this proton on to form this alcohol. And this is called the aldol addition product. And in some situations, it's possible to isolate these. Again, it depends largely on the substrate and the reaction conditions that you're using. However, under certain reaction conditions, um, you've got to bear in mind that if you've got additional protons at this position here, this is still the alpha position to this carbonyl compound. So you can enolize more than once. So if you've still got residual base in your system, which you know, you've just reformed over here, then you can remove another proton and enolize your aldol addition product. We then end up with this kind of enolate. And this is basically set up to eliminate this hydroxyl group. So if we push the uh, arrows through like this, and we can kick out hydroxide as a leaving group. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, um, which mentioned that hydroxide is a poor leaving group, and typically you should not be kicking hydroxide out of molecules under any circumstances, really, without protonating it first. Um, this is the exception to the rule, if you'd like, because this is an E1CB elimination. Um, and because this intermediate is reasonably stable, it will basically stick around until hydroxide leaves. Um, so if you want a reminder of the E1CB reaction, um, watch my video on elimination from saturated carbon. So this elimination reaction basically gets rid of water from across the, uh, this bond here. So this is what we call the aldol condensation product, where you've got a carbon-carbon double bond here, rather than the alcohol. And depending on the nature of your substrates and the reaction conditions that you're using, you could form one or either of these or a mixture of both. Um, it just depends really. So you'll notice in this uh, mechanism that um, the electrophilic carbonyl that we used looks very similar to the carbonyl that we enolized in the start. And if that's the case, we call this a homoaldol reaction. So if both the enolized carbonyl compound, which forms the enolate, and the electrophilic carbonyl that it reacts with are formed from the same compounds, then this is a homoaldol reaction. We have a homoaldol addition product and a homoaldol condensation product. So we don't have to do 
aldol reactions where both of these are the same. Um, by controlling the, the order of addition or the reagents that we use um, or the substrates, we can actually get what we call crossed aldol reactions, which is where we specifically get enolization of one carbonyl compound and we get it to react with uh, a different carbonyl compound. And this gives us a crossed aldol addition product and a crossed aldol condensation product. Um, now, crossed aldol condensations, uh, crossed aldol reactions in general, are uh, much more synthetically versatile than homoaldol condensations or uh, additions because you're not limited to having the same functional groups on both sides of the molecule. You can now start to form more complex molecules. And um, as I mentioned, there are a number of different ways you can control uh, which enolate forms and, and how the crossed aldol reaction works, um, but we'll discuss those in session. And just to demonstrate that the acid catalyzed uh, reaction is, is not too much different from the, the, the base catalyzed reaction, it just proceeds via an enol rather than an enolate. Uh, I'll just show the homoaldol reaction here. So, starting with your um, carbonyl compound, now we're under acidic conditions, and again, this is fully, uh, fully reversible. So, we're going to protonate our carbonyl compound first, um, which then makes it more amenable to being enolized. So, we're forming our enol from this compound. And then it reacts with another equivalent of uh, what we've got over here. So uh, your electrophilic carbonyl, again, protonated because it's acidic conditions. And we're just going to get the same sort of reaction that we saw above. And uh, if we remove a proton from this carbonyl over here, we end up with our homoaldol addition product, exactly the same as what we got on the previous slide. But now because we're under acidic conditions, we can protonate this OH group to form OH2+. Uh, which is obviously a much better leaving group. And rather than doing E1CB elimination, which only occurs under basic conditions, uh, we've now got access to E1 or E2. So either this forms a carbocation and then that gets deprotonated, or everything can happen at once. Uh, again, if you want a reminder of these two mechanisms, just watch the elimination video. So it doesn't really matter if your um, aldol reaction is under uh, basic or acidic conditions. The mechanisms are broadly the same, but the practicalities of how they work and the type of um, selectivity you can get is, is different. But as I mentioned, we'll talk about that in session.